What if I told you that the infrastructure, the groundwork, the framework for the system of the Antichrist is already here? One of the biggest mistakes people make regarding the Antichrist is seeing him as a far-off prophecy decades or centuries away. The reality is, many of the systems and structures that could support such a figure are already in place today. I recently had an intriguing conversation with an unbeliever who, surprisingly, had a deep understanding of Christian eschatology. He mentioned that although he wasn't a Christian, he felt he was slowly becoming one because of his beliefs about the Antichrist. This piqued my interest, as I had never heard of someone turning to the Bible or the Lord because of the Antichrist. He shared that the older he gets and the more global events unfold, the more he believes we are heading towards the scenarios depicted in the book of Revelation. He noted that with the increasing centralization of power worldwide, it seems entirely plausible for an individual to rise and gain control over the whole world. He stressed that it's no longer just plausible, but probable, that we are approaching a time when one would not be able to buy or sell without a specific mark, echoing Revelation's prophecy. This realization led him to question what else the Bible might be correct about if it accurately describes these developments. He continued, observing that historically, nations have fiercely guarded their sovereignty. The United States, for instance, fought for independence from Britain in the Revolutionary War, which began in 1775 and concluded with the Treaty of Paris in 1783. During this war, countless brave men gave their lives for the dream of a free nation. These men, whose names are often forgotten in the records of history, exhibited extraordinary courage and sacrifice. Similarly, Greece fought for independence from the Ottoman Empire, starting with the Greek War of Independence in 1821 and achieving success with the recognition of Greek sovereignty in 1832. India also has a significant history of striving for self-governance, marked by the Indian independence movement, which culminated in independence from British rule on August 15, 1947. Yet, in recent decades, there's been a shift. Countries are increasingly joining unions and global bodies that influence their sovereignty. The EU, NATO's expansion, and the influence of the United Nations and World Economic Forum are prime examples. It seems there is an unseen force pushing for centralized control. This global integration trend raises concerns about the erosion of national sovereignty. Nations that once valued their independence are now part of a complex web of global governance, suggesting an unseen influence shaping these decisions. This led him to conclude that the aggressive push for centralized control might be preparing us for the Antichrist. This man stated, I sometimes think to myself, if the Bible can be correct about this, what else is the Bible correct about? Something significant is coming, and even a skeptic can see that it's almost as if the world is being prepared for something or someone. As we stand on the brink of unprecedented technological advancements and centralized control, it is becoming increasingly clear that the arrival of the Antichrist may be closer than many of us perceive. The Bible vividly describes a time when the Antichrist will wield global power, a scenario that seems alarmingly possible in today's world. From the rise of global institutions to the advancement in surveillance technology, all signs point to the imminent unveiling of the Antichrist. This journey to the edge of prophecy fulfillment demands our urgent attention. Time is short. The consolidation of power into global institutions is a phenomenon that aligns chillingly with biblical prophecy. Organizations like NATO, the European Union, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the World Trade Organization wield influence that spans continents and impacts billions of lives. Imagine a scenario where a single individual rises to lead these bodies, commanding unparalleled authority over nations and economies. This is not a far-fetched idea, but a plausible reality given the current trajectory of global governance.
This interdependence sets the stage for the Antichrist, who, according to the Revelation 13, will exert control over all nations. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The rapid advancement in technology provides the tools necessary for such global control. Surveillance systems have evolved to the point where they can monitor virtually every aspect of our lives. Governments and corporations have access to unprecedented levels of personal data, enabling them to track movements, communications, and even thoughts to some extent. This is the infrastructure that could support the kind of total control prophesied in the Bible. Imagine a world where your ability to travel, work, and even buy or sell is contingent upon compliance with a centralized authority. This is not a distant dystopia, but a creeping reality. Technologies like digital IDs, biometric surveillance, and AI-driven monitoring systems are already in place. These technologies are not in the distance future they are here. The Bible warns of a time when no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. This prophecy seems increasingly plausible as we see the groundwork being laid for such a system. Digital currencies and blockchain technology, while offering benefits, also have the potential to be used for unprecedented levels of financial control. Central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, are being explored by many nations, including major economies like China, the United States, and the European Union. These digital currencies could be programmed to control how money is spent, ensuring compliance with specific regulations or mandates. Imagine a world where your digital wallet can be turned off if you dissent against the prevailing authority. This is the ultimate expression of control and the fulfillment of the biblical prophecy of the mark of the beast. As this system of control tightens, those who stand firm in their faith will face increasing persecution. Already, we see instances where religious freedoms are being curtailed. In some countries, preaching the gospel is becoming a criminal act. The Bible warns that during the reign of the Antichrist, many will be martyred for their faith. Imagine a time when pastors are imprisoned for speaking the truth of Jesus Christ. This is not a far-off possibility, but a reality in certain parts of the world today. As global control becomes more centralized, the pressure to conform will intensify and the faithful will be targeted. The Antichrist's regime will demand absolute allegiance and those who refuse will face severe consequences. One might ask, how does this level of control take form without widespread resistance? The answer lies in the gradual and incremental nature of these changes. Like the proverbial frog in boiling water, society is being slowly acclimatized to increasing levels of surveillance and control. Each new measure is introduced under the guise of security, convenience, or public health, making it difficult to see the bigger picture. Consider how travel restrictions, digital health certificates, and social credit systems have been normalized in recent years. Each step brings us closer to a world where every aspect of life is monitored and controlled. This slow march towards Revelation 13 is paving the way for the Antichrist's reign. Many people expect the Antichrist to make a dramatic entrance onto the world stage, but the reality is more insidious. The infrastructure for his reign is already in place, woven into the very fabric of our society. The Antichrist will not need to build his system from scratch. He will simply step into a ready-made structure of global control. This brings us to a critical point. The Antichrist has already been revealed through the systems and structures of this world. The centralized control, the technological advancements, and the erosion of freedoms are all indicators of his impending rise to power. The Bible says that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in the world. The Final Countdown to the Religion of the Antichrist We are living in the final moments before the fulfillment of these prophecies. The signs are all around us, for those who have eyes to see. The centralized control of global institutions, the advancement in surveillance technology, and the gradual erosion of freedoms 
are all converging towards a singular point, the rise of the Antichrist. As we edge closer to this reality, it is imperative to remain vigilant and discerning. The Bible calls us to be watchful and prepared, not to be caught off guard by the events that are unfolding. The Antichrist's arrival is not a distant future event, but an imminent reality that demands our urgent attention. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10, it is stated, The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie, and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. This deception will be so convincing that many will regard the Antichrist as a god. Satan, known as the father of lies, will leverage his expertise in deception to make the Antichrist's false divinity seem plausible and desirable to the masses. The Antichrist's rise will be facilitated by a world desperate for solutions to its most pressing issues. Economic instability, political turmoil, and social unrest will create a fertile ground for his emergence. His promises of peace, security, and prosperity will resonate with a weary global population, further cementing his status as a savior. This perceived benevolence will blind many to his true nature, making it easier for him to implement his agenda of total control and domination. If there is one being capable of crafting a religion so appealing and deceptive, it is Satan. This new religion, crafted by Satan, will be incredibly appealing to humanity. Revelation chapter 13 verses 13 to 14 describes the false prophet performing great wonders, even making fire come down from heaven to deceive the people of the earth. These miraculous signs will bolster the Antichrist's claim to divinity and lead many astray. This new religion will be seen as the ultimate truth by the deceived fulfilling Satan's long-standing desire to be worshipped as a god. The religion of the Antichrist will be meticulously designed to captivate and control. It will likely blend elements of various belief systems, philosophies, and ideologies to create a universal appeal. This syncretic approach will make it easier for people from diverse backgrounds to accept and embrace this new faith. By presenting himself as a unifying figure, the Antichrist will exploit humanity's longing for peace and unity, drawing them into his deceptive web. The false prophet's wonders and miracles will serve as powerful tools of persuasion. These supernatural displays will convince many that the Antichrist is indeed a divine being, worthy of worship. The Bible warns that even the elect could be deceived by these signs, highlighting the profound nature of this deception. Satan's ultimate goal of being worshipped will seem within reach as more people succumb to the Antichrist's charismatic and miraculous allure. If there is one being capable of crafting a religion so appealing and deceptive, it is Satan. Throughout history, Satan has demonstrated an unparalleled ability to twist truth and present lies in an attractive manner. In John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus calls Satan the father of lies, emphasizing his expertise in deception. The religion of the Antichrist will be his masterpiece, designed to mislead the entire world. Satan's historical tactics of deception can be seen in various forms of idolatry and false religions that have led people away from the truth. His ability to manipulate and distort is evident in how he tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, twisting God's words to sow doubt and lead humanity into sin. This same cunning and craftiness will be employed to create a religion that is irresistible to the masses, offering what seems to be enlightenment and salvation, but ultimately leading to destruction. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. The Antichrist's religion will likely promise enlightenment, peace, and a new era of human achievement. It will appeal to intellectuals, spiritual seekers, 
by presenting a vision of a harmonious world order, free from the conflicts and divisions of the past, this new faith will attract a broad following. Satan's deception will be so sophisticated that it will not only appeal to the senses and intellect, but also to the deepest desires and fears of humanity. If there is one being capable of crafting a religion so appealing and deceptive, it is Satan. The Antichrist's appeal will be multifaceted. He will offer solutions to global crises, such as economic instability, wars, and environmental issues, presenting himself as a benevolent leader. Daniel chapter 11 verses 21 to 24 depicts the Antichrist as a contemptible person who will seize the kingdom through intrigue and flattery. His rise to power will be marked by promises of peace and prosperity, further endearing him to a world desperate for solutions. The Antichrist's charisma and intelligence will make him a compelling figure. He will possess an uncanny ability to speak to the hopes and fears of people, presenting himself as the ideal leader in a time of chaos. His diplomatic skills and apparent wisdom will earn him the trust and admiration of many, allowing him to consolidate power with little resistance. This strategic approach will enable him to implement his plans gradually, avoiding immediate backlash and suspicion. His solutions to global problems will seem revolutionary and effective, further enhancing his appeal. The Antichrist will likely propose innovative economic policies, environmental initiatives, and peace treaties that promise to resolve long-standing issues. These apparent successes will solidify his reputation as a savior and leader, making it difficult for people to see through his deception. By the time his true intentions become clear, it will be too late for many to resist his control. Signs and Wonders If there is one being capable of crafting a religion so appealing and deceptive, it is Satan. The great wonders performed by the Antichrist and the false prophet will play a crucial role in legitimizing his authority. Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 to 17 describes the false prophet giving breath to the image of the beast so that it could speak and cause those who refused to worship the image to be killed. The ability to perform such signs will convince many that the Antichrist is indeed a divine figure worthy of worship. The miraculous signs will serve as a powerful validation of the Antichrist's claims. People have always been drawn to the supernatural, seeking evidence of higher powers and divine intervention. The Antichrist and the false prophet will exploit this human tendency by performing signs that defy natural explanation, making it difficult for even the most skeptical to dismiss their claims outright. These wonders will create an aura of invincibility and legitimacy around the Antichrist, making resistance seem futile. The signs and wonders will also serve to unify people under the new religion. Shared experiences of the miraculous will create a sense of community and belonging among the followers of the Antichrist. This collective belief in the supernatural will strengthen their allegiance to him and make it harder for dissenting voices to be heard. The miraculous acts will also be used to intimidate and eliminate opposition, ensuring that the Antichrist's power remains uncontested. If there is one being capable of crafting a religion so appealing and deceptive, it is Satan. Satan's ultimate goal has always been to usurp God's place and be worshipped as a deity. The new religion of the Antichrist will be the culmination of this ambition. In 2 Thessalonians 2.4, it is revealed that the Antichrist will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. This audacious act will mark the zenith of Satan's rebellion against God. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.